What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. So we're rotating series for a little bit. Uh, trying to get things out of the way that I don't think people are that into and bringing things in that I think people will like. And today we're checking out Wayward. If you haven't seen Wayward, I did a weekly any newcomer on it. It's a game about a shipwrecked sailor on an island. It's not a desert island though, because there's lots of fresh water and there's food all over the place. Essentially it's a survival roguelike and I think the game is fantastic. Therefore, it's making an appearance right here on the channel. So without further ado, let's play ourselves a little bit of Wayward, shall we? First things first, new game right there. Oh yes, it's going to randomly generate our world because everything is randomly generated in this title, as we like to see in games. This is our little character right here. It's actually randomized. We got a male character this time around. Sometimes you get a little dude, sometimes you get a little lady. It is what it is. So there's lots of stuff going on in this game, but one of the things I very much like about it is how streamlined and polished it is as a roguelike. Like, everything you need to know is right there on the screen, and really once you get the hang of it, everything kind of comes naturally. Like, some, some roguelikes suffer from growing pains as you learn all the different rule sets and the meta and all that kind of stuff. This game is not one of those games. Like, once you pick up on the basics, the entire game essentially flows just like that and then from there you kind of just do more of the same you get stuff done along the way so this is our line of sight as you can tell we are on some kind of island right here there's a little bit of grass over here that's a dead bush so there it is that right there is a pineapple plant which at the moment appears to be fertile hooray for us I'm gonna close that on down the top left hand corner stuff y'all need to know about Got health at the top left corner, that's right, we can die, we can be murdered by nasty things that want to hurt us, and believe me, there's a lot of them out there. There are things that want to, oh man, I almost said there are things that want to moon us. But no, their intentions are far more sinister than that. Down below that we got our stamina, which is essentially our physical exertion meter when that gets too low. Gotta take a nappy nap, you gotta take a nappy nap, and as I get older, I become more and more appreciative of the afternoons that I've spent unconscious. This is our thirst meter right here. It's going to determine how much water we have in our system before we get very, very ill and are no longer able to function. We start losing HP when that goes down. And then we've also got our hunger meter, which is exactly what you would expect. On this side, we've got talent, which is our score for the playthrough. The higher that is, the better your playthrough has been. And then we've got our weight allotment, which is how many things we're carrying along with us at the moment. Once that goes too high, we start losing stamina at ridiculous rates. However, when you carry a lot of weight you do level up this game has a skill up system which is kind of similar to what you would expect from a game like Morrowind or anything whereas you level up your skills by using them over and over and over again and so sometimes it's good to walk around heavily exerted and stuff like that uh, we got our attack score essentially this is going to be determined by how much tactics you have which your tactics is how good you are at fighting as far as I remember you've got your defense which is like you get from parrying and other stuff like that lots of things add up right now but at the moment that's pretty much all you need to know to get started with the game the game is not a complicated title it's actually pretty simple everything fine it's got mouse control which for a roguelike in and of itself is kind of incredible I know this doesn't sound like you know the tip of the razor I guess the cutting edge of technology here but however in roguelikes it's pretty rare that you get to use a mouse and so anyways I support that I'm gonna leave these pineapple plants alone you don't really want to harvest anything until you have a tool and I don't have a tool right now and that makes my life very very difficult so what I'm gonna do hmm our equipment list is empty oh yeah another thing that I like another thing that I like is we can take these menus right here. You can open the crafting menu by pressing C. You can open the equipment menu by pressing E, the inventory by pressing I. But it's all infinitely expandable. Like, you can make your own custom UI while you play the game if you want to. Where everything can be as large or as small as you want it to be. I love that feature. That's the best because I love rearranging my UI. I'm the kind of person that when I played, like, World of Warcraft or whatever, I had, like, a crazy custom UI that was, like, all over the place. Had lots of stuff going on. And I love being able to just sit and, like, fiddle with it and make it look purdy. I don't see a whole lot over here. However, we do have, we'll automatically pick things up if they are useful, by the way. If they're useful and or pertinent, just walk over them using WASD. We got ourselves some seaweed right there. That is edible as far as I know. Can be used as cordage or you can eat them if you're feeling particularly desperate. Consumed on use gives you hunger, thirst, health, and stamina. However, it may reduce them as well depending on the food. Yeah, sometimes food goes bad in this game and when it goes bad you kind of got to worry about that. There's some stones up there. There's a monster down there. We probably want to give that a bit of a wide berth. 
Let's maybe collect those. You can press Q to open a contextual menu on like anything that you want, and that'll give you all the other random stuff that you can just hotkey through to do. We got some remarkable stones, which really just means that they have higher durability than normal. And then we also got a large rock. That large rock is going to be very, very useful for crafting in a bit because we're going to need to bang it together to make ourselves some sharp rocks and some other things to make ourselves like a spear, a knife, and some other things to defend our life. Just in case, yeah, there's a rat right there. We don't want to mess with the rat right now. I like to assume that the rats on this island are like German shepherd size. Very, very unpleasant to be around. Just don't mess with them. I'm going to collect that. You got to use a tool because apparently even picking up stones, you can wound yourself. We've got five stones right now. We got a sharp rut. Let's make. So this is our crafting menu. Basically, anything that you have the materials on you for right now will automatically light up. And so if you wanted to do other things, by all means, mouse over them and have a look right here and figure out what your trajectory is for the course of your playthrough. But for right now, it appears to me as though we basically got enough to get started with some caveman tools. We can make ourselves, I don't know, some of those like fleck tools or whatever, those chip tools. I'm gonna make another sharp rock. And so there it is. Yes, crafting is fine and has many rules. We now have a sharp rock right there. We have a sharp rock right there that we started out with as well. In fact, let's go through our inventory and talk about the things that we started out with. So we started out with a bedroll. That's pretty cool because it allows us to sleep. Sleeping is, the function of sleeping is to get your stamina back. And so without that, life becomes kind of difficult. Oh yeah, our skill in stone crafting went up by 1%, by the way. You got to level up stuff in this game. As you level, some things will level faster than others. But leveling up is very, very important because it means you can do tasks with lesser risk to yourself and at lesser, like, stamina costs and all that kind of stuff. We have twigs, we have a sharp rock, we have white mushrooms, this one appears safe to consume, we've got a string, we've got twigs, we've got strip bark, we've got a stone, we've got a water skin of unpurified fresh water. So don't drink that, otherwise you'll get sick, or at least there's a chance of getting sick. We started with a stone shovel, which means that we'll be able to dig pretty easily, which is good. We've got ourselves a clay jug, we've got ourselves seaweed. A large rock, some stones, and everything from there is pretty much stuff that you've seen already. Now, if we've got ourselves two sharp stones, we can make a stone knife. This is going to function as a weapon and a tool, and I think it's a good idea. But we failed to make it, but we did level up, so we learned something while failing. So that's good. Wow, we are not doing well right now. If you are crafting an item, take a look. You see that white aura that goes around the objects? That's how you know what objects you're going to consume. It looks like we're actually breaking... There we go, we finally made our knife. However, it doesn't have much durability. 12 out of 16 is not going to be a lot. I did not want to place that on the ground. I would actually very much prefer that we pick that up. And then I would like to equip that to my held. And you can do that by dragging or dropping down into your equipment slots, or you can just right click on it and say equip to held. Now an item that is held in your hand is automatically utilized when you're doing any sort of crafting or any sort of harvesting. In addition, it looks like it added one attack up here. We're not very good at fighting yet, so we're probably going to want to avoid fighting anything like that spider over there. I would stay away from it right now until we got a little bit better equipment. Things that can guarantee our survival a little bit longer. The spider looks like it kind of wants to run us down, so we may end up fleeing the spider for a little bit. However, I would like to collect that. So we got ourselves a pineapple right now. That's going to be very, very good for our hunger and our thirst later on down the line. That spider is staying on us right now. Hopefully that shark will jump out of the water and be like, Rah! and like fight the giant spider. There's a fish right there. We can go fishing a little bit later if that's what you desire to do. If you wanted to spend a little bit of time angling for a meal that's a little bit better than the average like detritus and random things you can scavenge off the beach, then hey, that's how you would get it done. A water skin of purified water requires us to have a fire source, which we don't really have right now. Having a fire source requires kindling and it requires tinder. So the tinder, in order to make the tinder, we need twigs and we need a sharpened object. We have the sharpened object and we had the twigs. And then from there, we're going to need to make some kindling. This is going to be important because just make sure you have the stuff you need to make a fire later on. Because you never know when you're going to need to make a fire on short notice. Pray tell, is this fresh water? It's fresh water. Huzzah. Don't drink straight out of that though. Not right now. That'll get you into trouble. What is that right there? That is grass and a piece of shale on the ground. Okay. I'm going to collect these rocks off the ground real fast. That gives us a few more options to play around with. We can make a campfire if we really, really wanted to. But frankly, I kind of just want to map the island and get used to my surroundings before I do anything else. There's lots of hostile stuff around. I'll probably camp around here somewhere. Just due to the fact that we have an open water source that's going to be there for a little bit, it'll probably take us the better part of a week to two weeks to drink that water source. And from there, we can find a new place to settle down. Is this a ripe cactus right here? This is a non-fertile cacti. That means that it's not quite ready to go. Neither is that one fertile, so we'll leave it alone. 
Let's pick up that object right there. Okay, sounds good. Oh, we can make a cobblestone flooring if we really, really want to. We can cobble something together with our craftiness. Hooray for us. Pineapples everywhere, so we may subsist largely on pineapples from here on in. Uh, I'm not gathering with no tool. I believe that I am gathering with a knife. Hmm. That's concerning. The knife should have automatically been applied, and I'm not sure why it's not. Either way, we took damage right there. What are you going to do? We took damage right there, too. We've got the knife equipped, though. And it gives us access. Yes, uses carve and gather. We used gather, but we still took damage. Well, then. This is apparently my life now. We need to turn some of these stones into sharpened stuff. So let's go ahead and make these into sharpened tools. There we go. So we made two of those. The next thing that I'd like to make is a spear. But in order to get a spear, we need a branch. And that requires us to have trees around. I don't think these drop very many... Let's leave these alone for a minute. That is not a fertile pineapple plant. We want to find, like, foresty trees. We want to fight, like, coniferous trees. We don't want to use the ones that are... The palm trees are cool, but they're not useful for what we're doing right now. There's a snake over there. I don't want to fight a snake right now. They have this tendency to be poisonous. And poison in this game is not something you want to deal with right now. Not until you're good and ready. I mean, you can deal with poison down the line. Just don't do it right now. I should be able... Oh, we got a coconut, so that's pretty cool. You put the lime in the coconut. You drink it all up. A little bit of tinder right there. Ain't no sticks, though. Which is really the part that I need. Lots of kindling. That thing has been taken... Now, once you've stripped all of the random roughage off of a tree, every time you chop it from there on out, it just becomes a wooden log. Which is very, very heavy, by the way. We can get a wooden log if you really want one. Here, I'll show you. Although this is destroying our knife right now. Our knife's career is looking like it's going to be a little short. There we go. We gathered a log. You can't really do a whole lot with a log. Like, you have a log right now, and actually you can make random stuff out of logs. It's just I wouldn't recommend carrying around, like, a big armful of logs all the time. It's probably not going to go so great. Now, the tree bark is going to be useful because we can turn that into armor. I don't like to play the game without armor. I would recommend that you rush into bark armor as fast as you humanly can. Because it's only a matter of time before something attacks you and tries to take you out. And having that armor available gives you just like the few extra hits that it's required in order for you to get like your preliminary stabs off. When you're leveling up your attack skill in this game, it takes a little while. You don't start out like a Bujitsu Jackson Jones killing machine in here. You start out just like a guy who knows that the pointy end like goes in the enemy, but doesn't really have any particular skills at that activity. And so... I would really, really... Did I just make a smooth stone or did I make a sharp rock? I need sharp rocks. I need a huge, huge collection of sharp rocks if we can have that. And then let's make another stone knife. Because we are going to have to replace the one that we currently have in hand. Every now and again, you get like a legendary stone knife with like 80 durability on it. Oh my god, it is the best. It makes me so happy. Well, we need to track down trees. So let's continue our northward journey. That right there is ore, as far as I know. You can actually smelt that and turn it into bars so that you can get, like, iron armor and stuff along those lines. Yes, there is, like, a progression in this game. You do get stronger. You do get better at the game. You do have, like, a dungeon to dive down into on the island. Oh, that's right. There was a snake up here. Well, I hope it's not a particularly violent, aggressive snake because I'm going to try and walk right past it. Please don't attack me, incredibly violent snake. Oh, we need water. We need water right now. Well, I don't really have access to any, so we're going to eat that. And hopefully that just keeps us squared away. Now, we do have shallow seawater over here. The coconuts would probably not be the worst plan either. Oop, I dropped my coconut again. For some reason, I am just drawn. I deeply desire to, like, right-click things in this game, and I don't know why. Like, there we go. There's some real trees, but it's also guarded by a Doberman-sized rat. So that's unfortunate. He is going to try and close with us. He is going to try and fight with us. And at this point, it's a crapshoot. Like, you can fight stuff this early in the game. If you feel confident about it, give it a go. But I wouldn't recommend it. I would say it's a bad plan. Oh, he's coming in like aquatic. He's coming in like Navy SEAL style. He's coming in with like, he's got his night vision goggles on with like his little swimmy mask and everything coming in from the shoreline. I got you. All right. Calm down, SEAL Team 6 rat. I ain't trying to fight you right now. I come in peace. 
What is that? A piece of shale? Why do I want that? A piece of shale. What does that do? Oh, it gives me access to the carving command. Okay. That's cool. That pineapple plant is not ready to go. Is that... Wow, there are a lot of monsters on this island. This is kind of unfortunate. Sometimes there's a lot of monsters. Sometimes there are not a lot of monsters. It just kind of depends on how the random generator goes. Sometimes you get yourself in trouble that way. These are the trees that I need. That's a fossil. I don't recall what we use fossils for. I think you refine them down into carbon or something like that. We got some leaves right there, so that's a good thing. We can turn those into something. I think we stoke a fire with them or something like that. Our knife is in need of repair. I'm just going to let it break. Oh, good. We got the twigs that we required. One feature that I'd like to see added to the game is if you have a replacement tool, when you break your tool, because we just broke our knife right there, I would love to see it just slide the tool, the next tool in to play so that you're good to go. I'm going to equip that. Actually, equip that to hell, but also put it in my quick slot real fast. Yeah, when a man puts a knife in his quick slot, you know he's in the hooskow, the clink, or is otherwise in a state of duress. Most men don't want to hide. Most men don't want to hide a weapon in their quick slot. I love the soundtrack in this game, by the way. Absolutely fantastic. Really cultivates that ambiance that I would expect from like a game where you're shipwrecked and you're all by yourself. All right, so we got enough stuff right here to where we might be able to make this work. I need to gather more stone, though. Until I get more stone, we ain't doing shit. So let's see if we can avoid a mauling by a large rat, and if we can avoid being gnawed upon for the next like 30 minutes of this playthrough we might actually survive this. You gotta take it slow. Take it very, very slow. I'm gonna eat that real quick. I don't wanna fight you, slime. Leave me alone, Slime. I don't want none of, nope, mm, mm That's right, Slimo. I don't wanna mess with you right now. I ain't down with that shit. Got that snake over there, but the snakes don't tend to be that violent. So I think they'll probably leave me alone. What is that, stones? Okay, well, we've got stones. I can actually throw these if you really, really want. I don't know why I keep right-clicking. You can throw these if you want, and you can level up your throwing skill. That's really all that they're good for, and you don't level up very much each throw. As you can see, you get, like, a tiny, tiny thing. Our character apparently didn't play baseball. That's all I can figure, because his throwing skills are very, very lackluster. My throwing skills are on point. I'm like, I'm like a sniper with thrown objects. But then again, I played baseball for most of my known living life, and so... When you throw a lot of shit, you tend to get good at throwing shit. Let's go ahead. And, ah, there was trees right here. There was trees that I needed right there. Let's go ahead, then. And I'm going to... Let's convert... Let's make some wooden poles. The wooden poles require that we have a branch and a sharpened object. So this should work out pretty good. Oh, look at that. We felt ourselves getting stronger. And so what you might notice is that we have gained a little bit of health. And then I think we've also gained a little bit of carrying weight. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, we, out if we, if we can make a stone spear. I think that's probably advised. That's probably a good plan. So our tinkering has gone up a little bit. Now we've got a stone spear. I'm going to put that in the two slot. And then I am going to equip that to held. And so now we've got a stone spear, and we've got ourselves a stone knife. With five attack power, we actually stand a decent, reasonable chance of making it out of a fight with only severe wounds. That's a good thing. We can make this better on us, though. We can make the odds more swung in our favor. Now, the things that you can do with a lot of this stuff... So, the main thing that you can do with branches is you can turn them into poles. Poles are going to be very important because they are the baseline object that you, mean you need to make the majority of the tools in the game. However, you can also strip these for bark. Stripping these for bark is very important because that gives you the stuff you need to make string and cordage, which is also useful. A fire plow would be very, very good right now, and it would get that heavy piece of wood out of our inventory. And so you know what? A fire plow? Well, if I make... We just need to make fire, so yeah, make the fire plow real quick. Come on, there it is. Sometimes when you fail, it'll break one of the items that you're trying to use to craft. It's just a part of the game. There's no telling when it's going to happen or why it's going to happen. It just kind of does sometimes. Four is always my fire starting device. Starting fire is very, very easy. You just press four until there's a fire in front of you. Just like that. And then from there... Well, from there, you can stoke the fire and do some other things. However... That fire is going to be all over the place if we're not careful. I think it also used my kindling when I did that. However, I can purify my water. We failed to craft a water skin of purified water. 
We're so we're so inept at camping right now that we can't even boil water. That's how bad we are at this. So we've got that right there. My suggestion now would be, while we've got a fire lit anyways, can I... Yeah, stoke the fire with some of that tree bark. Thank you. Keep that thing up and running. We are going to drink that water. Good. And then we are going to gather water. And then on this side, we are also going to gather water. We were very fortunate in this playthrough. We ended up with two water collection devices, which is pretty big. So, oh yeah, it's down here. So we'll go a fresh clay of purified water, and then we'll go a water skin of purified water. And we're getting better. Apparently boiling water is an important aspect of chemistry, so we're getting better at chemistry right now too. Never underestimate your cooking skills. We can't really do much else right now. So let's go ahead and focus on, I'm gonna make some stripped bark. Come on. And I'm going to get more string than I know what to do with for right now. And the function of this string is not to make us a rope. It is, in fact, to use some of the bark that we have to make a bark tunic. Not good for the nipples. It is highly probable that this will cause some kind of nipple chafing. But when it comes down to it, you got to survive how you got to survive. So... A bark tunic it is. Our skill in woodworking has gotten better. Tinkering has gotten quite a bit better. And it's got 17 out of 18 durability. Now, they, this doesn't show up on your character as far as I know yet. But the developers have said that it's on the docket. You know that that's one of my pet peeves about games. is like when, when armor doesn't show up on your character when you put it on. Oh, shit. I accidentally stepped in my fire. That's a bad thing. Because now I have burns. I, I don't like the burn mechanic right now. I wish that there was a warning because I misclick all the time and accidentally step in my fire. Like legitimately, if you click on this right here, it will step you into the fire. But like certain contextual things require you to mouse over it. It's just easy without thinking about it to click on it and step on the fire on accident. It happens to me all the time, which leads me to believe that it can happen pretty easily. And so anyways, I would like it if a little thing would pop up and say, you are about to step in fire. Are you sure you want to do this? So you could be like, no, I don't want to do that. That was an accident. I misclicked. Because actually, you can die of a burn in this game. Like, because your HP will go down pretty frequently. I don't think that going in water or anything like that helps. Like, you can make lotion out of aloe vera plants, like cactus plants or something like that later on down the line. But for right now, there's not going to be much I can do about it. The burn should go away on its own although I have burned to death from full health before so it seems to be kind of RNG based so take from that what you will uh, let's go I'm gonna collect you cuz you look delicious and I wanna eat you let's eat that that'll keep our health evened out essentially we kinda just have to spam food on ourselves and there we go we no longer feel the pain of being burned fantastic you just have to write it out you just have to write it out I, next up, we need to get a better selection of tools. And because we started with a stone shovel, I am feeling pretty solid about the fact we need to find some stone. If we can find some stone, this right here is not stone. Well, it's a type of stone. This is sandstone. Sandstone is not that useful. What we need to find is like the actual gray stone that we were using earlier to craft because they actually are mutually exclusive. They're used for different things. Sandstone does one thing. Greystone does another thing. It's also possible that there might be other islands around where we could do this from, but I would rather just be careful for right now and not... I, I don't want to roll the dice with God at the moment. I don't want to roll the dice with God. He RNG Jesus never favors me. He doesn't like me at all. It's, it's no good. It's no good. But we're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. This game is called Wayward. This is just like a one-off series. Doing this because I don't really have much else going on, and I felt like people weren't really into Space Run Galaxy. I, I had a feeling that people weren't really into it, and so we're going to try this out for a little while. I hope you guys enjoy it. I think the game is fantastic, and it's one of my favorite little indie games that I've picked up over the last four or five months or so. I like the game a lot, and I've got a decent amount of experience in it, so I figured I'd show it off for like a full series, because why not? I got nothing else. I was going to try and pick something else, but there is that a... That's like a smaller rat, though. That one's easier to murder. All right. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.